Hello, I'm Bob Trebshaw. I'd like to talk to you today about Rutland and what used to be Framland 100. Both are land units now in East Leicestershire, one still called Rutland, but Framland is now Melton Borough Council. However, historically, Rutland was never part of Leicestershire, and indeed nearly everything I'll be talking about predates the notion of counties. Um, well, we could be going back even a thousand years before that. Counties were invented about the 10th century and took off during the 11th century. The concept was quite simple. A county town became the administrative centre for several so-called hundreds, the previous administrative unit. Hundreds typically the size of modern borough councils. Well, counties proved to be a better idea, and there's any number of English counties still named after their more or less central town. Leicestershire itself is one. Around Leicestershire, there's Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, Lincolnshire, Northamptonshire and Warwickshire. Further afield, we can go to Gloucestershire, Worcestershire, Staffordshire, Oxfordshire, Bedfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Cambridgeshire, Hertfordshire and, of course, Yorkshire. There was once a Huntingdonshire, and even Wiltshire is an example because it's named after the then county town of Wilton. And bear in mind that Salisbury didn't exist until the 13th century. Lancashire is also a contraction of Lancastershire, and Cheshire is a contraction of Chestershire. Hampshire is another disguised one, as Southampton was originally just Hampton. Leicestershire is a classic example of a county town at the meeting point of four hundreds. Goscott, Guthlaxton, Sparkenhoe and Gartry. Oh, and yes, right off from the beginning, Leicestershire included Framland 100, which isn't adjacent to Leicester itself, um, just in the same way that Rutland is more or less self-contained. Now, a slight detour is needed regarding Rutland, because historians wonder why there was never a Stamfordshire, with Rutland and adjoining parts of Lincolnshire and Northamptonshire. A big question, why did Stamford not become a county town? And historians haven't really given a definitive answer. They guess it was something to do with the way Stamford was being run by Scandinavian settlers at, at that time, 10th and 11th century. So, back to what we've actually got with Rutland and Framland. Um, are there any parallels between Rutland and Framland? Well, you've probably spotted one already. Both the names end in land. Now, the modern meaning of land usually refers to the part of the Earth's surface that's not underwater. Mm-hmm, yeah. But it still has a secondary sense of a country or state. And also the sense of land in the phrase landed gentry. And it's landed gentry who get us closest to the Anglo-Saxon sense of the word land. In Old English, the word land principally meant the home region of a person or a people, particularly territory marked by political boundaries. Um, So let's look a bit closer at Rutland. Back around 1980, the eminent historian Charles Fithian Adams looked at the boundaries of Rutland and noted that, with one short exception, they followed high ground. And that ground was marked by prehistoric burial mounds. Indeed, one of the parishes is called Barrowby. Um, so the little exception is to the northwest of Braunston, towards Nossington and Cold Overton, and, lo and behold, there was once a wood there called Flitteris Wood. You'll spot it on modern OS maps as Flitteris Park Farm. Uh, what's so significant of this? Well, the old English word Flitteris meant disputed boundary. Charles Fithian Adams argued that Rutland was not only an Anglo-Saxon land unit, but must have been a Roman land unit, and almost certainly an Iron Age or even Bronze Age one. Now, so far as I'm aware, in the 40 years since his papers were published, no one has disputed this interpretation of the origins of Rutland. And just in the last couple of years, rather wonderfully, it seems that uh, what was possibly the Roman administrative centre for Rutland has been uh, discovered. Um, just to the southwest of Ketton, there's a superb mosaic uh, indicating a very high status villa. Fithian Adams remarked in the 1980s that Rutland continues as a district which is distinguished by its extraordinary Englishness. 
One of the reasons that Rutland retained an independent status as a county is that by the mid-10th century, this England's smallest county was part of the traditional dowry of the Queens of England. Um, The evidence suggests that this perpetrates a previous custom of Rutland being the dowry of the Mercian Queens. We know that Queen Edith, who gives her name to Edith Weston on the south shore of Rutland Water, was the occupant of the estates in 1066. Her queenly predecessors perhaps go as far back as Alfred's sister Ethelwythe. Um, she died in 888 and appears in historical records during the 860s. Now, there's a lot of folk etymology about the name Rotland, which suggests that it's something to do with rattling or reddening sheep. Yeah, it sounds bonkers, and it is bonkers. The root part of Rutland is actually from Rota, the name of the leader of the tribe of Anglo-Saxons who settled in, well, Rutland. So that begs the question, is Framland also the land of somebody called Fram? Uh, well, strictly no, but it is most probably the land of someone called Franny. Uh, Come on, misreading two N's as an M is a common scribal error. Now, this is not what it says in place name dictionaries. Uh, Their compilers note that the earliest recorded version of the name is from Franny's Lundra. Lundra is a Scandinavian word meaning sacred grove. And, well, yes, very likely the meeting place for the hundred was at or near just such a grove. Fine, I don't have a problem with that. We even know where the Framland 100 meeting place was. It's shown on OS maps as Great Framlands. Uh, this is to the north of Melton Mowbray, where an ancient north-south routeway, um, now merely a bridle path, runs over a hill spur known as Great Framlands. There is a small wood, probably planted in the late 18th century as a fox covert to the north, uh, and that's shown on OS maps as Scorford Gorse. However, I, I doubt very much if this modern woodland is the original Londra. Presumably the hill spur was once wooded and became known as Franis Lundra. But, because Lundra is a Scandinavian word, it could not have been in use before the late 9th century. And clearly Framland 100 existed well before the late 9th century, and must have been called something. And Framland, or pedantically Franisland, makes perfect sense. The Scandinavians came along didn't have a grasp on the old English word land, so corrupted it to a word they knew, Londra. Plenty of parallels for those sorts of changes and corruptions. Why didn't Rutland change to Londra too? Simply because almost no Scandinavians settled there. Only the settlements of Glaston and Normanton provide evidence for Scandinavians in the whole of Rutland, in marked contrast to quite dense Scandinavian settlement in East Leicestershire and most of Lincolnshire. Now, there's something else that Framland shares with Rutland. It was originally almost the same number of square miles. So we know from Charles Fillion Adams, Rutland's retained its boundaries over the centuries. However, the same cannot be said for Framland, which has, as it were, oozed out in most directions. Let me try to explain. Prehistoric land boundaries almost always follow watersheds. I plan to do a future video which will go into that in more detail. Such high ground is where long-distant routeways often pass, so that bands of warriors and such like could pass by rather than pass through settlements. Rutland has just such high ground on most sides, although it hasn't got the long-distance routeways, and that western part around Flitteris Wood being a key exception. We can reasonably assume, although I'm unable to prove, that Franny's land was bounded to the north by the Ironstone Ridge, with the prehistoric and Roman route, later known as the Salter's Way, running along the ridge top. At some point in time, a whole string of parishes in the Vale of Beaver to the north, such as Long Glawson and Redmile, became part of Leicestershire and therefore part of Framland 100. I have no idea why, but it was likely to be the result of landowners living to the immediate south. To the south of Framland, there's a ridge of high ground which includes the dramatic Iron Age hill fort at Borough on the Hill. And, well, to the east, the boundary of the Rutland seems to have been as it is now. To the west, things have also evolved. At the time Rutland and Franny's land would have been created, then the eight parishes making up the Leicestershire Wolds were an independent unit. 
Back in 1989, the noted historian Harold Fox published an article setting out the reasons why. Sometime in the 10th century, the walls were split down the middle, using the Foss Way as the boundary, and the eastern part joined Framland, and the western part joined Goscott 100. Right up in the north, the village of Bottisford and the hamlet of Normanton are also part of Framland. This is an anomaly resulting from land owned by the successive occupants of Beaver Castle. Uh, Beaver didn't have a chapel until the early 19th century rebuild, and well, it is a parish church at Woolsthorpe, it's in Lincolnshire and in the Wapentake of Winnie Briggs and Threo. So, Bottisford, which had long been a wealthy and prominent place in Anglo-Saxon era, uh, the church there was adopted as the burial place of the Manners family, and who evolved from being the Earls of Rutland and then into the Dukes of Rutland. Back in 1066, Bottisford was held by Leofric, who almost certainly was based at Bottisford, but owned land in many of the surrounding uh, parishes. After the Norman Conquest, that estate passed to Robert of Tosney, who also controlled the villages around Beaver Castle. I assume it was Robert of Tosney or an immediate successor who built the first of the castles and called it Beaver. Belvoir, French for good views. Take away all the later additions to Framlin, and Franny's land may well have looked like this, which is about the same area of excellent farmland as Rota's land. Coincidence? I think not, which strongly implies that a land unit smaller than the later Framland 100, one that was rebranded Melton Borough Council in the 1970s, was, like Rutland, a land unit going back to the Roman era, and in all probability to the Iron Age. <laughs>